Hi, welcome to this video about process model number three with R. That is, a moderated moderation analysis. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use process for R to estimate a model with an independent variable, a dependent variable, and two moderators. And those two moderators interact so that the second moderator moderates the moderating influence of the first moderator. Before we can start analyzing our data, we have to initialize process for R. Process is not a package, but it's a user-defined function. And in order to make R understand this function, we have to run the process code. You can download this from Hayes' website. The link is in the description. At each session you want to run process for R, first you have to run this code. It takes a minute or two, so please be patient. I'll be cutting this to the point in time where it has finished. That's it. Now we can use process. First, let's have a short look at our data. We have an independent variable, two moderators, a dependent variable, and in this example I have two covariates. Here is a basic R syntax for running this moderated moderation. So these are the necessary components given our data. The process function name, the name of our data frame, the names of the dependent variable, independent variable, and both moderators, the model number, and since I have two covariates, the names of the two covariates. There are some important rules you should follow if you want to see process run smoothly. First, process is written in lowercase letters. Then the variable names have to be in quotes. Variable names, of course, in R are case sensitive, so it makes a difference whether you write dv in uppercase letters or in lowercase letters. And finally, you're not allowed to use a factor variable. So if you have a binary variable, for instance, gender, you have to change it into a numeric variable. I almost never use this basic syntax because there are some options that are quite helpful. And this is the code I recommend. Again, data frame, names of the variables, model number, and here the covariates. And without covariates, I simply skip this parameter. hc equals 4. There I request a robust standard error so that I don't have to check the homoscedasticity assumption. Because with this robust standard error I get correct results even if I have heteroscedasticity. In order not to check the normality assumption I use bootstrapping. So I set the number of bootstrap samples to 5000. I request bootstrapping for the model parameters. I change the bootstrapping method to a bias-corrected bootstrap. Default would be a percentile bootstrap. And I set the seed value for the random numbers generator to any integer number. Because with that you make sure that each time you run this code with the same data you get the same results, which makes it much easier to write down the results later on. The moments parameter changes the moderator values for which simple slopes, that is conditional effects, are calculated. And with moments equal 1, you get minus 1 standard deviation, mean and plus standard deviation. And the last parameter I use here, center equals 2. With that I mean center continuous variables that are part of products, that is the independent variable and the moderators. Because mean centering can make the interpretation of the results a little bit easier. So that's the code I'm using. If you want to just copy and paste it, you'll find it in the description of this video. Before I run this code and we can look at the results, there's one important thing still to mention. Process runs regressions, or in the case of a moderation, one regression. And regression analyses have assumptions. And you're only allowed to interpret the results if those regression assumptions are met. But process doesn't check those assumptions for you. If you want to know more about how to deal with regression assumptions 
in the context of process. I've made a tutorial about that as well. You'll find a link to that in the description of this video. Now let's run this process code. Since I'm using bootstrapping, it takes a couple of moments. So here's the output. It starts with the model number and the variables. And I think it's a good idea to recheck whether you really have used the correct variables. From there, I go to the end of the output, because here are notes and possible error messages. And the important thing is to make sure that there are no errors, because it doesn't make sense to interpret results and only in the end realize that you're not allowed to interpret those results because there are some errors. Next to the regression model. Here the model summary. You can interpret this as any model summary of a regression analysis for multiple regression. So the p-value tells us that all predictors taken together explain a significant amount of variance. We see here HC4, so this p-value is based on a robust standard error. Here is the regression table and we find four interactions. And down here, the product terms key, there you can see which interaction number corresponds with which interaction. And for a model like this, the most important interaction is the three-way interaction between the independent variable, the moderator 1 and the moderator 2. Because if this three-way interaction is significant, then we know we have a moderation of the effect from the independent variable on the dependent variable by our moderator 1, that is moderated by moderator 2. That is how large and in which direction this moderation by moderator 1 is depends on the second moderator, moderator 2. And here we see interaction 4 is significant. So we have a significant moderated moderation. Down here we find the test of highest order unconditional interactions. Highest order in this case is this three-way interaction and we see it's the same p-value. This R2 change can be called delta R square and it shows us how much additional variance this three-way interaction explains in addition to all those other predictors in our model. So this is the effect size of our moderated moderation. Since we get a significant moderated moderation, we can look at a number of follow-up tests. Here we find the test of conditional interaction between the independent variable and the first moderator for different values of the second moderator. So for three different values of the second moderator, minus one standard deviation, mean and plus one standard deviation, we get the conditional interaction. That is for low values of the second moderator. This is the interaction between the independent variable and the moderator, and it's significant. For medium values of the moderator, this is the interaction, and it's significant as well. And for high values of the moderator, this is the interaction between the independent variable and our first moderator. So we see for higher values of the second moderator, the interaction between our independent variable and the first moderator gets more negative. I think a little bit easier to understand and interpret at the second table. Here we see the conditional effects of the independent variable on the dependent variable for different combinations of the first and the second moderator. So the first row, for instance, would be first moderator minus one standard deviation, second moderator minus one standard deviation, so low values of both moderators would give us this effect which is not significant. And for instance here, mean values for the first moderator and the second moderator would lead to this effect from the independent variable on the dependent variable. And this effect is significant. So you find nine combinations for the first moderator minus one standard deviation mean and plus one standard deviation and for the second moderator minus one standard deviation mean and plus one standard deviation. And finally, what you would like to check the bootstrap results, because those results are robust against any violations of the normality assumption. 
at least if your sample size is about 50 or higher. This is basically the same regression table we have found at the top of the output. However, here we don't have p-values, we have bootstrap confidence intervals. And if the bootstrap confidence interval does not include zero, then we have a significant result. So in order to check our main result, the interaction for, that is, the three-way interaction, here is our bootstrap confidence interval. It does not include zero, so this confirms that we have a significant moderated moderation. So that's it for checking a moderated moderation with process model 3 with R. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Thank you so much for watching.